not just for a skit. A skit. A skit. Yeah. A skit. That's a skit. Nice. I think I, I, I won't disclose. Don't give exact exactly. nothing. Exactly. Uh, no. My five figures. Okay. Five figures oh, skit. wow. Oh, that's good. And then on the tail end, on that's, the tail end, which, yeah, you know, like yeah. if it sells good, you know, I'm, I'm getting paid. That's dope. That's you know, uh, uh, <laughs> what's this called? Um, in perpetuity, which is a good word. Ron, yeah. put that word up there, perpetuity, and put the definition on there. Because Ron does graphics, too. He's going to hit you with some graphics right now. This is all interactive right now. Right now, as I'm talking to you, Ron is putting up like something of me doing something real quick. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I love my team, man. Ron is doing it. But Ron's going to do me a favor right now. He's going to put up perpetuity right here. Perpetuity. See that? Can you see that? And then that's the definition right underneath that. Yo, it's got a heck of yes, it grew back. You said it grew back, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, I told, I told Gary, I said, "Yo, can we do that?" That was some ASAP, funny shit, Frankie. ASAP, because I, I just cut my hair. I'm going bald, <laughs> right? So yeah. I don't want this shit to turn into You're a heck of a men commercial. You tried to do the shit yesterday. Yeah, I said, "You no. tired of looking like pain in the ass? Yes. We can help you out." <laughs> 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 yeah. man, like, they, like it's gonna show me a freeze frame like that, and like they put the uh, Ron, do me a favor, freeze frame right now, and draw a little like afro around that real quick. Got it. That's what I would look like after the hair club thing. Yeah, you stupid, but thank you, man. You, you showed up for me. There we go. Of course I'm going to show up for you what, what was your first best scene in Streets of Watching that you remember the movie? So, okay, Streets is Watching changed my whole life. Streets is Watching was the turning point because after Volume 1, what happened was they were going, with, with the success of, of Reasonable Doubt, was the fact that they were all street records. And it almost came to a head because they were going to put out Dead Presidents with no B-side. And it was Heavy D that told them, yo, you need a B-side and it should be that ain't no nothing. You know, you have to have a party record on there. So they put that on there and the DJ started playing Dead Presidents and one of them got the idea to flip it and play ain't no nothing. And then that just blew completely up. You saw the difference. Yeah, you were. We were in the clubs now. It's killing we were shit. everywhere. Jay was now... In the clubs. I was like, yo, yo, you're from Queens. Go that way, man. Go right. 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 This way. So <laughs> we, we got, we got Don't in too the much. clubs. Don't too much. You got in the clubs. But unfortunately, on the second time around, on <laughs> volume one. Man, hold on. Let me stop shit up there. Let me stop shit up there. My whole group of people. I don't know what it is. Yo, Queens, man. Put a disclaimer out. Yo, yo, yo. 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 Let's come out with a hot album, but let's put out the singles that are more radio friendly, you know. And unfortunately, it didn't really catch on the way it should have because Value One is one of his greatest works. I love that album. But he made a couple of cuts for, for the radio. Ron, that's where I'm from, right? Value One's right there. Where I'm from? Yeah. Lucky oh, Me. Lucky Me. Lucky Me. You Must Ima- Love Imaginary Me. Play. Imaginary Play. You Must Love Me. A Million. A Million. A Million in the Second Job. That album went over people's heads. That album felt. People felt Jay Ma- I'll be honest with you, People felt Jay Ma- commercial on No. I, I, I didn't think you did that wrong. I, 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 I didn't think that either. I believe people but I would. Bro, you didn't think that wrong? But it's because of the marketing. It's because of the marketing. Frank, did you think that? No. It's you probably thought Jay's because, because how it's marketing. Okay, okay, okay. It was because how it's marketing. Yeah. You yeah. belong yeah. to the city. Yeah. And then, so, and touch me with hard to go. But he was spitting on those tracks. He was spitting on them. That's good. But, but okay. they were a little, they were a little catered to, and, and what happened was he followed a different format. He started going with more bad boy producers on that second one. There wasn't that much ski. There wasn't that much um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Don't premiere. And there wasn't I'm that much. That, there wasn't that much Clark Kent, which was mm-hmm. the nucleus and, and the bulk of, of Reasonable Doubt. Value One comes. It's more the Hitman. It's, 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 it's Puppy's crew. And he did that again in Value Two. He went more with Swizz. He went with that direction. So in his first like four albums, he kind of had. Different, like like how a movie would be where you have different directors. So uh, Rocky 1 is directed by this guy, but Rocky 2 is directed by this other guy. So okay. it's a whole different aspect. He caught fire when he got to the Dynasty album because he found his own producers. It was now Kanye. It was just Blaze that were going to direct the rest of the pictures after that, if you understand what I'm saying. If that makes sense to you. Okay, no, no, no. Do you understand that. what I'm saying? Yeah, a pain in the ass, man. Okay, so Value 1, they go the other route. Hard album. But what happens is Dame says, fuck this. Fuck all this. So does Jay. Let's put out then a movie of just the hard shit. Fuck that radio shit. Let's put out the where I'm from. 
and, and you must love me and face off. Let's do it ourselves. And he went and he had Def Jam. I forgot friend, oh, well, that's for some bug. Yeah, friend of, friend of Home Part 2 is yeah, it. Yeah, 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 friend yeah, of Home Part 2 is it. And he said, I'm going to put this shit out. And that movie changed my whole life because yeah. I started that movie just like I would start off his albums. And now if people were able to put two and two together, I'm like, oh shit, that's the kid that does all the skits on it. And that's when my face became, yeah, I had face recognition from then on. That movie changed my life. And it's funny about that movie was that I got casted to be in Belly because um, Hype Williams directed Can't Knock the Hustle, the video. Up to that point, Abdul Malik Abba, big shout out to him, directed every J video and directed Streets of Watching, but they wanted to go another direction because this was going to be a big song with Mary J on it, so they had Hype Williams directed. Now, I'm on in that video, and Ron, you put it up right now, I'm dancing in the table at the end of the video. You know, because I was, you know, I cursed, you know, we were there fucking around. You, were you on that video, too? Which one? Um, Can Knock the Hustle? I don't remember, yo. I just, that was August of 1996. Yo, Payne, you know I was around for a lot of shit. Okay, so you must, I, I think I remember you there, though. All right, I was there. This is South Street Seaport. This is August 14th. I was, I was, I was, I was there. August 14th, 1996. It was downtown of the Seaport. I was in the party lighting coke. So I was, I was dancing on the table. We, we, we were snapping, and I snapped against, uh, I was snapping on um, Hype. Started dissing him. I thought I was in trouble. And instead, he put me in the video. And then he goes, yo, I, I, you know, what are we going to do with you? I was like, I don't know, whatever. So he goes, yo, give me your number. So about six months later, he wrote, he called me, wrote me. It's like 1873. Dear Payne, I would really like, like, like this is normal shit. Like 96, you had to beat somebody. So he beat me. He was like, yo, I wrote this part for you in this movie. It's called Belly. It's going to be crazy Nas is in it. And that also was a turning point because that was the first time that Damon and Jay said, now we manage you. So I was no longer the intern anymore. I was an artist on the label. Maybe not a, a musical act, but I was going to act, and they were going to yeah try to get you more roles. They were going to get me roles, but then I got that role. So I mean, I gone and I went to a reading for it. And Oz was there, and Scarface at the time was supposed to be in the rapper, and Terrell Hicks, and it was it was going to be really big. But for some reason, unfortunately, he ended up cutting me out of there. But he actually did me a, a service because that's when they first decided we're going to manage you, and you now this is serious. This isn't just the camp laughing and having a good time with you, like. Maybe other people see the star quality in you, and that's what led them to be like, yo, fuck it, start off the streets is watching that. So I kind of, you know, I'd rather have taken what I've gotten. The streets is watching changed my whole life. Had I been in Belly, I may have not gotten the same recognition that I got from being in streets is watching. That's how important that movie is to me and to all of us. Mm -hmm. Because then that was, and, and that, when I say all of us, I mean all hip hop fans, because him doing that movie and, and winning with those street records led to the next generation coming. So the Norries, the, the DMX that were able to make street records instead of trying to make radio friendly joints like he did on volume one. Like he famously said, I took the hits for you. I took those hits for you so you can succeed. It's so true. It's so true. Not not putting anything out there like so low him or something.